Lattice struct structures were built as far north as Pagan, showing a geographic expansion not seen during previous periods. Many of you are familiar with the terms Lati and pre lati The new chronology, including Chamorro terms, derives from five decades of scholarly research into the Marianas archeological record. On the screen is the breakdown of the Marianas archeological chronology with a finer partition of the pre lati period. We consulted Chamorro language experts, Dr. Sauder and Palomo, who provided an explanation for how they describe the different eras. For the early and middle Unai periods, when there were no permanent settlements, their description means the ocean voyagers came and went. The Chamorro description for the late Unai is, the ocean voyagers stayed and established their homeland. The language experts further describe the Hudzong period as a time when people moved inland to utilize different resources. The Lati period is the time when the people became Lati builders. Since 2015, we have sampled ancient skeletal collections from two sites on Guam, the Natan Beach site in Tuman and the Haputo site along the Northwest coast and the Anaguan site in Garapan on Saipan. In, <clears throat> sorry, in 2000, what? What? Okay, in 2006, Excavations began at a hotel renovation project at Natan Beach on Guam. The work resulted in the recovery and analysis of 370 sets of human skeletal remains. Two temporally and culturally distinct groups were recognized at Natan. Those who lived during the Latte period from about 1200 years ago and an earlier population who lived during the middle to late Unai periods from as early as 2800 years ago. These middle to late Unai burials at Natan were the first of their kind to be excavated. They contrasted with the later Ladi populations in morphology, pathology, and mortuary practices. The Unai graves were deep in the white sand below darker culturally enriched soils of the Ladi period. 96% of the Unai burials were fully extended and in a supine position that is on their backs, as opposed to 56% of the Ladi period burials which were also found in flexed or bundled positions face down or commingled with other people. It was not unusual for skeletal elements to have been removed from Natan, Ladi period burials. No such behaviors were seen in the Unai assemblage. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -hmm. Elaborate treatment of the deceased is generally lacking at Ladi period graves and the grave goods are few and simple. Late Unai burials had a larger quantity and greater variety of grave goods compared to the Ladi burials. Some of the late Unai burials included deposits of red or yellow ochre. The late Unai burial on the left includes an, an Anadara ring bead necklace and a large pinctada shell. On the right is a late Unai infant with more than 100 shell beads and a shell bracelet on each arm. Grave goods in child burials are extremely uncommon in the Ladi period. There were differences in size and dimensions of cranial bones, post-cranial bones and dentition at Natan. The Unai population was more gracile than the Ladi population. Other differences included the incidence and types of dental wear and changes in the locations of activity related degenerative joint disease. These traits suggest that Unai people engaged in different activities compared to the Ladi people. Diseases differed between the two populations. In particular, treponemal infection, yaws, was not identified in the late Unai population at all, but was common during the Latte period. Beetle net staining in adults was common during the Latte period. Here's an example on the right. Beetle net staining was essentially absent during late Unai, as you see on the left. The late Unai were the first people to create permanent settlements and bury their dead in the Marianas. Despite their physical and cultural differences, were the late Unai ancestors of the Ladi people? Were they related to modern day Chamorros? When we began this work, the prevailing settlement scenario was that these early people 
were migrant farmers from the Northern Philippines who sailed across the open ocean to the Marianas. The argument for a Philippine origin was based to a great extent on similar pottery types and linguistics. However, currents and winds were not favorable for travel to Guam from the Philippines and sailing simulations favored travel from island Southeast Asia. Nevertheless, the migration model of colonists leaving the Philippines to seek new lands had been perpetuated for decades. If they didn't come from the Philippines, where did these early visitors to the Marianas come from? Could ancient DNA analysis help the answer these questions? The first phase of the project would determine if any DNA had survived the hot and humid burial environment. For a feasibility study in 2015, we sampled dentition because at that time, lung bones and teeth were thought to be the best skeletal elements for DNA recovery because of their strength and density. We submitted dentitions to colleagues at the University of Huddersfield in England, and they detected highly deteriorated DNA in some of the teeth, but the results were disappointing. Ancient DNA can be extremely fragmentary and seriously degraded under adverse burial conditions. The Neton skeletons were fragile after millennia of burial in warm, wet environment, and the DNA preservation was poor. While our first attempts to recover DNA were not successful, by 2018, the technology had advanced significantly. We tried again, this time using the petrous portion of the temporal bone. The petrus is a bone near the base of the skull, which houses the middle and inner ear. The cochlea in the inner ear is the hardest bone in the body, and it remains strong and dense, even under harsh wet burial conditions. Uh, Dr. Ron Pinhasi, uh, now at the University of Vienna, determined that the cochlea is a reliable DNA source, and he developed a technique that allows for the recovery of DNA from fragile samples, such as those found at Natan. Our new research partners were Dr. Pinhasi and Dr. David Reich and UHN Liu at Harvard Medical School. And Dr. Olivia Chernay from the Pinhasi Lab assisted us in selecting samples at the Guam Museum. At the Pinhasi Lab in Vienna, the small portion of the cochlea was powdered and brought into a specialized clean lab where the potential contamination was carefully controlled for. The cochlea powder was chemically processed to purify the sample. The samples were then sent to the Reich lab where the DNA fragments were decoded and transformed into sequence data. Samples that yielded analyzable DNA were also radiocarbon dated, so we have solid dates and confirmation on our assumptions of age. Uh, we now had late UNI DNA data from Naton but we still needed to study ancient DNA from the Ladi period to determine if there was biological continuity between the two populations. So in 2020, we collected Petrus samples from the Naton uh, Ladi skeletal collection. And with additional support from the Reich lab, we also collected Ladi period samples from the Anagwan site on Saipan. Now the Anagwan site in Garapan was first excavated in the 1990s and again in 2015, just prior to the construction of Best Sunshine's Imperial Pacific Casino. The excavations revealed a clear pattern of Ladi period occupation across much of the Imperial Pacific project area. Radiocarbon dating showed a continuous occupation of this coastal zone from the 11th century AD through the historic era with Ladi period occupation being the most robust in the 13th through the 16th centuries. Uh, Haputo is on military owned land in the Northwest coast of Guam. It is protected by the US Navy as the Haputo Ecological Reserve. Some archeologists believe Haputo was occupied as early as 2000 years ago. Ceramics from the area date in the range of 100 to 400 AD. Several Ladi structures were investigated during a joint U.S.-Japanese research project in the early 2000s, and burials were recovered from the floor of one of the structures. Very limited analysis has been done of the remains, but we were able to include several teeth for the DNA project. In all, we and others collected ancient DNA samples from Guam, Saipan, and Ponope, 
and we compared them with modern DNA samples from Guam, Palau, Chuk, and Pompeii. Most of the prehistoric samples came from Guam and Saipan. The results. The indigenous people of the Marianas Islands derived all their pre-colonial ancestry from East Asian sources, specifically island Southeast Asia, as indicated by female inherited mtDNA haplogroups, E2A and E1A. Previous study of the Anaguan remains by Dega et al. in 2017 reached the same conclusion. These variants of the E lineage formed 5,000 to 10,000 years ago in Eastern Indonesia, likely in Sulawesi. These variants are present in all ancient individuals from Guam and Saipan and are absent from ancient individuals from Polynesian sites who derive from Melanesian sources. These findings contradict Chamorro origin models based on historical linguistics and similarities in pottery, which assert the Marianas indigenous people derive their ancestry from farmers in the Northern Philippines. More than 90% of the late Unai maternally inherited DNA, E2, belongs to the most common lineage that is present in the modern Chamorro. The E2 lineage originated during the Holocene between 5,000 and 10,000 years ago in Eastern Indonesia, most likely Sulawesi. The marked homogeneity in late Unai Y DNA implies that all Nat Naton Unai males came from the same geographic region. By the Lati period, all the islands of Micronesia, including the raised coral islands and atolls of the central Carolines, as well as the Marshalls and Kiribati, had been occupied by seagoing peoples, and our study detected more DNA lineages among the Lati individuals. These new Lati period lineages reflect ties with Melanesia and Eastern Indonesia. A maternally inherited lineage common in ancient Polynesians, B4A1A1 also appears in some LADI individuals. The increased genetic variation at that time <clears throat> appeared to relate to migratory streams within and into Micronesia. The Unai burials at Natchon were confirmed to be the earliest known burials in the Marianas. Radiocarbon dates for the Unai burials range from 2800 to 2200 years ago. Extreme homogeneity in ancient Marianas mtDNA, shown by the dominance of two variants of the E haplogroup, implies matrilocal residence after marriage, was practiced throughout the prehistory in the Marianas. In matrilocal societies, the new husband joins the wife's family. Whole gene home analysis. Whole genome analysis yields accurate estimates of family relationships up to third degree relatives. At Naton on Guam, analysis of 28 late Unai individuals identified four families, each with two members, including one pair with a first degree relationship and three pairs with second or third degree relationships. Among 75 Naton Laddie individuals, whole gene analysis, genome analysis identified seven families with between two and 30 family members in each. We found three pairs of individuals with mother-daughter relationships, three individuals who had a father-son relationship, four pairs were siblings, and three pairs had unspecified first-degree relationships. In addition, 82 pairs of Laddie individuals had a second or third-degree relationship, grandparents, uncles, aunts, cousins. Each burial's location had been plotted during excavation and the whole genome analysis showed that closely related individuals were often buried next to each other or nearby in genetically defined family groups. Here are the plots of seven Laddie families with their relationships. Family B had the most members interred at Natan and may have been one of the oldest families at the site. Precise information about burial location was absent from Haputo. I lost it, <laughs> sorry. Uh, precise information about burial location is absent from Haputo, but among the four individuals studied, we found one family with three members. One pair of individuals had a first degree relationship and another pair had a second or third degree relationship. All were buried in one house at the site. Among 46 individuals from Anagawan, six families were identified with two to six members in each. 
Here's a map of the excavation grid at Anagawan, showing the six families in differently colored squares. The small map shows the burial clusters. A family of five was identified that included a mother and her two sons. Two other individuals had a mother-son relationship and there were two families with pairs of siblings. Also identified were 15 pairs of individuals with second or third degree relationships, grandparents and grandchildren, aunts, uncles, and cousins. The gray squares mark the presence of burials not analyzed in this project or that did not yield sufficient DNA. In 2021, our research team, including Ms. Titano, traveled to Dr. Reich's lab at Harvard to observe how the ancient DNA samples were processed and analyzed. Here is a presentation by our Guam research collaborator, Alyssa M.C. Titano. Maybe. We'll hope it plays now. Ross, Ross and Joanne, for, for the sake of time with the media, yes. um, wait, I, can, wait, wait. I, can share this, I can share this with them after. Oh, good. Uh, okay. I want, good idea. I want to give them some time to ask questions. So, can, questions. can we just go to the next yes. slide? Thank you. Yep. Yes. Okay. okay. To summarize, the analysis showed that the lineage of both the Unai and Ladi period groups originated during the Holocene in Eastern Indonesia. The Unai at Natan are the earliest known burials in the Marianas. The Unai and Ladi period DNA showed no direct prehistoric connections to the Philippines. Despite differences in appearance and custom, the Unai and Ladi people of Natan Beach, along with the Ladi people from Haputo and Anaglan, shared the same eternally inherited lineages, proof of genetic continuity across 2,500 years and into the present day. The study showed that the ancestors of the modern Chamorro were here from the beginning, a permanent settlement. The late Unai and Ladi people were the direct ancestors of the modern Chamorro. Future research. The search for Chamorro origins using ancient DNA has just begun to reveal information that is challenging older scenarios based on language similarities and pottery design comparisons. Ancient DNA goes much deeper into the human past while directly connecting present day people to that past. The Marianas data are limited due to the small number of archeological sites sampled. A new goal is to obtain a more comprehensive record analyzing more samples from sites in Guam, Saipan, Tinian, and Rota. The archeological record in each island is complex and DNA from prehistoric occupants is bound to reveal new and interesting information. And we plan to pursue this exciting prospect in the near future. Thank you very much, ladies. Um, a lot of good information. Um, I would like to open it up now to the media uh, to ask any questions regarding this project and the studies, um, you know, and, and, and feel free to, to ask anything to them or, or myself. Hey, Pat, Nestor, I got, I got fascinating stuff. I've, I've got questions. Go ahead, Nestor. Hello? Okay, um, so uh, I'm just to, to um, uh, Rosalind and, uh, and, uh, um, Joanne, um, so would you consider this incontrovertible evidence uh, of, of uh, the origins of the ancient Chamorros as opposed to, um, you know, the, the previous belief um, that it was from the northern Philippines based on, as you said, um, pottery and um, language? Yes, the DNA doesn't lie. <laughs> okay. All right, just want to get that on the record. So um, have you done some cross-referencing with uh, uh, locations in Indonesia to confirm um, what the DNA shows? That, that uh, there's some uh, modern DNA from Indonesia that is part of a, this larger study that we're part of, the, the um, Micronesia-wide study, but we haven't ourselves done any of that. But yeah, there's no ancient DNA that we know of uh, from Indonesia yet. That's a big gap. We need that. Okay, and, and if I could just one more uh, before I pass it on to the colleagues here. Um, any theory as to why they left to come to the Marianas and eventually settle? Well, if you think of these people not as settlers or you know explorers, think of them as uh, marine foragers who had seasonal annual or every few years uh, moved around to different islands 
for uh, to collect resources and to trade. Just think, think of them as as just moving about uh, the Southeast Island Pacific area. Yeah, but sea levels were going down too. Um, I, I think all of these island people in Southeast Asia knew about the Marianas, knew about the Western uh, Micronesian islands, but sea level was so high that it was no place to land canoes even. It, it, a lot of these high islands had mangroves around them. So not very ha uh, hospitable to marine foragers who want to work with the reefs. So one theory of this being developed and has been being developed for a while is that the reason that they came so far to the Marianas is because um, they needed to expand their range as competition for resources was heightening in island Southeast Asia. And it has to do with dynamics. When the sea level goes down, you have more land, more island space, but then you have more competition. And we had some in that island Southeast Asia area also agriculturalists. So it was a complex um, area from which these people came. But uh, we, it, archeologically, it doesn't look like they really settled down until the sea level had, had declined enough to make some little beaches for them to land. But it also uh, made it time to <laughs> get the, the, the heck out of Dodge and, and actually stay in the Marianas. With, with help, you know, with uh, relationships uh, with their parent populations. Thank you, thank you, fascinating stuff. Thank you, Nestor, for those, for those uh, great questions. Uh, opening it up to anybody else. Oh, sure. uh, yes, hi, Phil Leon Guerrero from the Guam Daily Post, uh, okay, if you can Phil. hear me. Yeah, so um, I wanted to ask uh, if, if we could get some maybe regional or historical context to some of the, um, I guess some of the distinct features of the burials that you found. So as far as, for instance, uh, burials of the time throughout Micronesia uh, for infants to be buried with jewelry or um, mm -hmm. the matra locality of the burials uh, that you found for the late Unai people. I, I, I wanted uh, to know if you can give us, you know, how that compares or contrasts to similar burials in, in the Pacific of that time, if, if you could? <laughs> the data aren't there. We don't have the data. No, we know that we know what we have found in, in, in the Guam. Marianas, yeah. in Guam and in the CNMI. And we know what people have found in Palau in terms of traditional uh, forms of burial. Uh, and that's as far as it goes. Mm -hmm. There, there are problems with preservation in a lot of the areas. So uh, there is no, literally no archeological record for many regions. Or it's just very, very, very minor. And yeah, to find whole burials, I think the Marianas, well, for one thing, the Marianas are, are very well studied archeologically compared to other high islands in Micronesia. Ponape, yes, yeah, some of the late prehistoric, um, there's, there are burial tombs in Pompeii. So we know that certain uh, individuals were buried in very elaborate stone uh, tombs. So we, we know about that. And we have some um, burials, I think about four burials from a small island near Nan Madal, that, that monumental site that has the, uh, the giant tombs in it, um, where they, the burials were, did not have any um, elaborate grave goods. Grave goods, uh, in Micronesia, as far as we know, our data, of the, the most elaborate ones are these um, or late Unai burials. They're very distinctive, but and, and we the, the, have a good regional context to, to really give you a good um, context for it. I also just wanted to kind of uh, ask you to help underscore kind of the point that although there are um, you know, biological differences noted and cultural differences noted when comparing the burials of the two eras um, that, you know, sort of, uh, I, maybe it's just a question of uh, how often before we were analyzing DNA, uh, did research and researchers assume that these cultural and biological differences sort of equated to differences in ancestry uh, which the, the DNA, as you said, uh, shows that there's a, a common lineage despite those uh, differences and changes in history. 
Well, most of the burials that are known in the Mar were known in the Marianas until this project in 2006, they were Laddie period burials. So the Laddie period burial patterns were very well known by archeologists. And, and when we first were exposing these Leiduni people, uh, it, was, it was clear that they were different. And I thought at that time that, that they were from a different population. So the DNA results were a surprise to me, but it did demonstrate how we can come from the same line uh, yet change over time based on our activities and food, you know, over a thousand, 1500 years, you can, your, your appearance, your musculature and so forth and your customs of maybe incising teeth, things like that will change over time. Thank you so much for all this great information. Thank you, Pat, for the invite. Thank you, Phil. Uh, I think Joe Titano, you had a question? Uh, yeah, I do. Thanks, Pat. Uh, so just to just to clarify, does this uh, so does this information kind of shut the door on any possible you know this is from the late uh, Udai period? Does it shut the door on you know uh, other migration from the Philippines? You know, I think the by tomorrow no. tomorrow history is that there there were multiple the idea is that there were multiple migrations. Right. Long, if I'm correct. Right. Yes. In the late period, like last thousand years, there was a lot of population movement all over Micronesia. And yes, we have in, Latte, in these Latte individuals, we had some that were coming from Melanesia. So yeah, it's, it's a very broad sweep. This uh, project projects back into the very earliest mobile foragers who we have no burials for, but it looks like once they settled down, whoever they were, they came from island Southeast Asia. And later on, uh, as populations grew so immigrants came in there was more variability in the dna so uh, we know the philippine connections historically and it's kind of uh funny it, it was pretty pretty odd if there were no connections with the philippines prehistorically as well but remember we just have a few hundred samples it's not really a lot of people considering how many people once lived in the marianas over the last 1500 years and, and I guess does this new uh, DNA evidence does that kind of um, does that does that paint uh, like a closer historical or genetic tie to some of the other areas in Micronesia with Chamorros that we maybe thought had a very different uh, migratory pattern before? Not sure what your question is. Uh, could you state it another way? Uh, th this may my ancient uh, Micronesian history is and uh, maybe I'm butchering the question a little, uh, but I. You I, my understanding is that uh, the idea was that uh, some other areas, you know, Choke Pompey may have, uh, you know, it was a it was a separate migratory pattern from, you know, that first settlement of uh, remote Oceania. Um, does this reveal maybe, you know, these folks had some the same origin as opposed to, uh, you know, tomorrow's being from the Philippines as we thought before? Oh well, the uh, the, the initial populations from uh, Pompey, Koshrai, Chu is a Melanesian connection. It's not the uh, island Southeast Asian lineages that are showing up in their DNA. That's from modern uh, Ponopeans, modern um, Chukis, modern Koshine. The, the DNA from there shows that those, uh, the, the ancestors of those people came from Melanesia, you know, or northern, northern uh, New Guinea, that Papuan area. So it's definitely different, but it's also much later. The oldest, the oldest archaeology in any of those last three islands is about 2,000 years. It's not 500, it's 2,000. So different, different uh, situation held uh, in Micronesia um, after, you know, 1,500 years. So we get a kind of a burst of, of occupation around 2,000 years in a lot of places in Micronesia. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much Anything for the information. Else? Uh, no, that's it for me. Thank you, Pat. Okay, uh, just an opportunity to Marvik and Jason, if you guys have any questions. Just one question. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hello? Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, well, given that um, different er early early settlers came from different locations, are there any common characteristics among all these different groups of people uh, that will identify the ancient? what, who the ancient Chamorros are? 
Well, if we study their teeth, we can get some information about the diet that they pursued. But again, you have to have burials in order to get uh, analyze the teeth. And um, they're just not available. We don't have very, very many um, bear, you know, ancient individuals to study in other areas. And you know, there are the, the DNA results. <clears throat> there are physical characteristics that were common in the late Unai, uh, like a, 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 they were more gracile overall when you look at the skeletons and compare the skeletons. And there were differences in, in size and shape of bones and teeth. And so those are, those are things that actually need some more study to quantify that information so that it can be used to say, yes, this, this is from an earlier uh, time rather than um, just, uh, just looking at the Laddy period, which is more identifiable. It's, it's much more familiar to osteologists to, to look at the Laddy period skeletons and, and recognize a certain suite of characteristics. So more study is needed. Uh, Pat, I have one quick question. Okay. Go ahead, Nestor. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to ask, from like from an archaeologist perspective, and you know, this is your life's work. Um, can you comment on the significance and, and why it, it is so important for people to know definitively where they come from? Great question. <laughs> yes, if you had a you will listen to it after we close. Uh, listen to Alyssa's. Um, video where she's a Chamorro woman uh, who said she always wondered about her origin. She was a little confused uh, culturally and it's very revealing what she says in that video. So, I mean, this is up to who, whoever wants to take this information and run with it, that's fine. I mean, we are, we are here to uh, study and, and, uh, and reveal what we can about the past, the human past. All right, thank you very much. And, and are we gonna get copies, Pat, of, of the presentation? Yeah, I'm gonna check with the ladies right after this to see uh, what what uh, we can release to you guys and I'll, I'll get it out to you before lunchtime. Thanks, my friend. Yeah, Jason, do you have anything? He's just doing tech. <laughs> okay, got you. Thank you. Anything else, Marvik? I'm not with the all. I'm just going to be waiting for the whatever your documents you're going to be sharing with us. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, you guys. Uh, we're, we're reaching up a, an hour, and uh, thank you for your morning. I think it's of, of great value that uh, we can share this information to, to the people of Guam and beyond. Um, you know, great insights and, and DNA. Uh, you know, a lot of it was, uh, you know, very technical and scientific information. Uh, so if you have any further questions, please send it to me on my uh, GovGuam email. And then uh, if uh, Joanne and, and Ross, can you just stick around on the, uh, the back end here and we'll discuss what kind of part of the slides we can share with the media and then I can get them mm -hmm. out okay. within the hour. Sure. Okay. Any other mm -hmm. questions for us, media? Um, if I could just ask, is there any... Uh, future uh, research that either uh, the ladies are directly involved in or maybe just uh, research that you heard during the conference is happening that you're excited about uh, that would maybe, you know, help move this along or, or address some of the gaps that you were talking about that are important to, to fill? Yes. 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 Well, there are assemblages still in the CNMI uh, on Guam. Uh, we are hoping to go to Palau to collect there as well. So uh, that, that's something that this information, this has opened a door for us because um, people see that we just need a, a tiny little sample. We don't want to be destructive. We don't want to disturb, you know, the, the remains. Um, and, and so we are having some very positive responses from um, resource managers about now. Uh, allowing us access to skeletal collections. Yeah, who would have who would have thought uh, today's uh, technology can really bring us back to the past and, and tell a story yeah. of, of a thou you know thousands of years ago? So, um, on behalf of the young ladies that have done this research, 
um, you know, thank you very much for the media members to uh, to chime in, and I will be getting you some some more uh, information or, or at least some of the slides to you uh, by twelve o'clock. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate your time.